Okay, so we're just going to kind of finish off the unit by doing just a couple days on um, word problems. Now, the word problems will probably uh, help you even understand sinusoidal functions even more uh, than less, okay? The, today's is kind of like, uh, here's the formula, find a bunch of stuff out. Tomorrow is, given a bunch of information, find the equation, okay? So, tomorrow's just going to be a reverse of today. Now, today we're going to be talking about sinusoidal functions. Now, the word is a little deceiving because that is sine or cosine curves. Okay? Now, hopefully, at this time you know that sine always starts here. Okay, that's a... Uh, and cos does this, right? So you can actually do a uh, horizontal phase shift by pi over 2 and turn a sine curve into a coast curve. So that's why you always have to be really pay attention when they ask, is it, you know, is it a sine or is it a coast? Okay? Now, a sinusoidal function is something that just keeps going and going and going the same. So anything that repeats, okay? Hours, or a day repeats. Every 24 hours, it turns back to midnight, and we start at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Years, we start at day 1, January 1st, get to 365, start uh, January 1st again, right? Um, you know, all the seasons, the hours of daylight. The okay, hours of daylight obviously uh, change minutes per day. Okay, the uh, sunrise is never the same two days in a row, but there is two times a year that sunrise is the same, okay? There's the, if you have the longest day of the year, do you see that it had to approach the longest day of the year and it's got to get away from the longest day of the year? So those would have the same amount of daylight as we go away from that, okay? So today's really about Oh, like how do I graph that thing? Okay, so it's all about 100% common sense, which is the most difficult part in math. Okay, it's how do we take this complicated stuff and make it something that I know. Now, if you have a, uh, we got depth of meters is D of water in a harbor. T hours after midnight can be approximated by the function D of T equals 12 plus 5 cos 0.5 T. Now, that's a pretty intimidating statement right there. And it's, it's, for some students, they really get bogged down just at this point. So what we want to do is translate it, okay? Get it into stuff that we know. Now, the first thing, it is D equals. So remember that D, this is going to be my Y, okay? And time is going to be my x. So that's kind of standard things we want to write down right away. The other thing is, what I don't like about how it's written is that I don't even recognize that. But I could do one little thing. And what I want to do is I want to get the 12 out of there. Like, that's not how I learned it, right? So I'm going to put it at the end. So this turns into the daylight or sorry, not daylight, depth equals 5 cos 0.5 t plus 12. So now I know my A, B, C, and D. So what's A? What's A? 5. What's that, though? 5, what does 5 mean? Anyone know what 5 means? Amplitude, okay? What's my B? Now, what does B mean? No. That's how you can get period. 
right? You have to do a little math to get the period. B is just the what's what have we always known it to be? Yeah, horizontal stretch. Okay, it could be a horizontal stretch by two. Remember the words have to be reciprocal. You might want to check out the older study sheets. What would be my C? Dun, dun, dun. What would C be? Six? Six. Well, since there is no minus or whatever, C would be zero, right? And that's something good to know. Like, there is no T minus whatever in brackets. Okay? So that's C equals zero there. And what is 12? It's D, but do we even know what D is? That's my new center line, right? It is 12 above zero. So I want you to think 12 with a 5, below 5, above 5, below 5. So what do you think the maximum value is on this whole graph? 17, very good. What would the lowest be? 7. Because it's 12 plus 5 minus 5. Plus 5 minus 5. Okay? Now, since C is 0 and this is a cos graph, we know that it's going to start high, right? Sines graph start at 0, cos graph start high. Question? Uh, no, we divided by 2 when they gave us the max and min. So remember D equals max plus min divided by 2, right? But we don't know the max and the min, so we can't use this formula. We're actually going to go backwards, but we do know what is the other, what is the way to find the max? Who remembers? D plus A. Your midline plus A. See, this didn't come in handy today, but some people were trying to use it. So that would be 12 plus 5 equals 17, and the minimum depths would be D minus A, which is 12, minus 5, which equals 7. So what are we talking about here? Okay, let's talk about a graph here. This is D. Why? Because Y is D. And this will be time. The D is always the center of the graph, the middle. Okay? So let's put D of 12 to be here. Say that's 12. Now I know it's starting up here. Why? Because coasts always start high. Now, if there was a coast 0.5 t minus 3, well, then i got to move 3 to the right. But it's t minus 0, so I'm starting high. Now, here is 17, and here is 7. So it's going to kind of go like this. That's my tides. They just keep going over and over. That's low tide, high tide. So now hopefully you're kind of getting a visual of that's the average, would be about 12. And then it makes sense that D is max plus min divided by 2 because it should be the average. And that's how I always remember it so I don't get it mixed up with A, which is minus. Max minus min over 2. So that's my graph right there. Now, the thing that I don't really know is, like, what kind of times are going on here? So, what we should do next is what they ask, and they said, well, find the period. Now, what is the formula for period? 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 0 0.5. Now, 2 divided by 0 0.5 is 4. So, 4 pi is my period. Now, what would that be in hours? 
Because it's four pi hours, actually. It's like, huh? Four pi hours. What's four pi hours? Well, what's four times pi? What's four times pi? 12.57 hours. So every 12 hours, this is going to repeat. So this is what I can start to see already. That's 12 hours. You see, and then it starts again. 12 hours. Starts again. 12 hours. See, hopefully today helps kind of... Um, start to make sense of this and then okay I get it why it's D in this whole thing maybe just a real life application now here's here's a question now they've taken written response off the diploma but I'm responsible for doing it for you for giving that mark but this was such a common question write a suitable window which can be used to display the graph now why do they want that they want to understand if you know how to use technology they want to understand do you know how to take all this and and put it into a graph. So with all of these words, what would you do for your x's? What would be your minimum x? Zero. Now look at my x. I'm talking about t. What would you think you put a maximum on? I'm open to any suggestions. 1440. Yeah, I don't know if it would be a little, it would be like 24. Let's see what happens in a day. Now, trust me, once you write this down, you're not stuck to it. Maybe you're going to graph it after and go, oh, it's crappy. And you go back and you change your window settings. Now, how about Y, which is your depth of your water? Now, I've kind of even given it away a little bit. My minimum would be zero. What would your maximum be? 20. Okay, we don't want to go too high or else we got this like little tiny graph at the bottom because we made our window settings so high, right? Like you don't have to make it 600 meters. A big tidal wave coming through or something later, I don't know, but we can just keep it kind of little, right? And then go one. Okay, so just take some time now. Can you just graph? There's the, you know the equation. Because once you graph this, you can do some really efficient stuff. Okay, it's one of those things where you got to put in the time, but after you get to save a lot of time. So 12 plus 5 plus 0.5x. So I actually put in the original. Uh, now my window, I'm going with zero twenty four one and zero twenty one. Now, should I be in radians or degrees? What tells you to be in radians? Yeah, but we didn't come up with pi. We actually did that ourselves, the 2 pi. We could have went 360 divided by b, right? It just seems weird to go degrees right and left, right? So you're going to find probably 99.9% .9 of these times these word problems are in radians. I haven't come across a word problem, actually, unless it was like a real, like, we have so many degrees and we do this, Okay. But if they're saying degrees, 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 go to degrees. If they say nothing, do radians. Okay? See, that's something you write in a study sheet. I know you're doing this unit last, so maybe you're going to get into the diploma and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But that's the stuff you put down. So you'll read it like that. And you go, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Okay? So we hit graph. And let the beauty unfold. Okay? So, obviously, mine is just a little bit different, but you can get the point that right here should be around 12 hours, right? So how do you, 
how do you check this stuff? Like even how many of you actually put your answer of the quiz into the calculator? Because you came up with a formula. I had a picture. You should have put yours in. So you've got the same picture, but the same window settings. That's a that's a good way to go. I got that one. Right? Now, how do I know? Because this is supposed to be, remember this? It's supposed to be 12.57. So this is how you can check it. You go second. I'm going to find maximum at that point, right? Because this is where I assume Okay, so I got 4 pi, which is 12.57. It's 12.57. So I've even checked the period one. And I should understand that this is period, right? And then it goes again. So this is 24 hours. This is a day. Do you understand your graph? That would obviously be something. Uh, now, what is the depth of water to the nearest tenth of a meter at 2 a.m.? Where's 2 a.m.? What would X be? 2. So all you do is you hit trace, 2, enter. See, at 2 a.m., the height is 14.7 meters. Okay? So all we did, let's write that down. How do we do that? Go trace, 2, enter, and you get 14.7 meters. Now, a ship which requires a minimum of 8.5 meters of water is in harbor at midnight. Okay? So everybody knows, here's where the ship is. Now, it says that it needs over 8.5 meters to be in harbor. If it's less than that, it gets grounded, which is probably millions of dollars of damage. Okay? So... It's got to get out before it gets to 8.49. So here it is. The water's going down, 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 down. How am I supposed to find out at what time I need to get out of there? So I'll put 8.5 here and hit graph. Okay, so boats here, 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 here. I got to get out here, right? This is all bad, okay? And this is actually a, a very um, true problem because that's why ships are always floating out in harbor, big ships, is maybe they can unload at this point. Then they got to get back out. They get usually tugged out, okay? And then they get pulled back in. And this is the b best window you can obviously see. This is a pretty long window that we can maybe get. And, but if we come in at midnight, we can only get half it done. Or it might, might say, let's just do it all at once tomorrow. So then they get out there and uh, they just wait in the water till the tide comes up. Okay? It seems weird with all the technology we have nowadays that you actually have to depend or you have to plan on Mother Nature to do all their thing, all her things, and then you got to come back in and out, right? So, how do we find this point? Oops. Second trace, we'll find intersect 5. Now, again, know where this is, right? Because I'm looking for this spot here. Hopefully, you, you know that. So, get the little spider over there. The poor four-legged spider. Okay, and enter, enter, enter. Okay, 14.6923. So you want to be quite accurate and write it all down. So we, x equaled 14, or 4, sorry, 4.6923876. Now what on earth does that mean? What does 4.6923876 o'clock mean?
What does the four mean? Four hours. Okay, we got that. And this? Is it 69 minutes? No. Okay, well, that one at least gives that one away, right? I know when it comes to 6.45, people want to put 45 minutes down because, hey, there's such thing. Okay? So we've got to take this and multiply by 60, just the decimal. And that'll tell us what percent of the 60 minutes. And what do you get? So zero, well, this, with, this comes in at, if you multiply the whole, it would be 41.54, right? Dot, 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 dot. So the question would be, at what time would you leave? It would be either 441 or 442, correct? Now, if you use rounding rules, we pick 442. If you use common sense, what's happening at 442? Okay, you're stuck. So this would be bad. Okay, you must leave it 441 or it's too late. And this would be kind of panic time at the old harbor. And you'd see probably like four tugboats come over and just start reefing on that thing and get it off, get it out, okay? Now, at what time... Because you don't start up a big ship. You start up a big ship, you're not going to be able to stop by King. So that's why those little boats come out and they just tow it in and out, right? Now, what time can that ship come back? So this is all time that it's waiting out there in harbor. Okay, so what time can they come back? We want to look for this point right here. So it's second trace, right? Um, and we'll write that down in the, and we're going with five again, right? Now get the spider over there or else you'll get the same value you had before. And hit enter three times. So we got 7.87. So we're going to do intersect. Um, now remember we did y2 equals 8.5. And then intersect, right? So this will do intersect at the different point. And we'll get x equals 7.873983. Now, we're just going to take this. How many minutes is this? 52.43 minutes. So what time would we want to start entering harbor? 753. Now, obviously, rounding rules. Oops. Rounding rules would say, no, 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 752. This would be bad, right? You're basically bringing it in. It's going to be scraped in the bottom. Okay? So there's an entire question that is, I think, a pretty good application where you just have to think about what are they asking? What are they talking about? Okay, let's do another one. This one is this is weird. Something's wrong. I got this page done twice. Okay, um, in uh, a certain town in Alberta, the time of sunrise for any day can be found using this formula. Okay, and this is actually a true formula. This is how, with this formula, you can find out sunrise. So, um, this is not something just made up, okay? And it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is plot your points for a year. Sunrise is the same every day, every June 21st, every year. Every June 21st and a quarter every year, okay? So, actually, if you didn't do leap years and you did 365 and a quarter, so truly, it is every day. The, le the reason it's off for us is because we've changed our calendar, right? But um, and usually your, your news will give you this. Yeah, sunrise was this. Uh, does anybody know 
the earliest sunrise in Alberta. Yeah, it's before you probably get up. And latest? No, probably not, like 11-ish, right? It's around there. And 5-ish is about the... So that's the longest day of the year, which is June 21st, right? First day of summer. And the shortest day of the year is the first day of winter. Okay? So, first of all, what we want to do is want to understand this question. Where T is the hours after midnight and D is the number of days in the year. Now, this one stretches it a little bit because... It's calling January 1st kind of the longest day of the year. And December 21st is the longest day of the year. So this is kind of 10 days off this, but it's good enough for just an application in here because if we get to, it would, this would actually be a, uh, okay? But before we graph this, what would be good window settings for the time? Okay? So we're thinking like this. Now remember what T is. It's the hours after midnight Okay, so we want to think, like, if zero would mean, what does zero mean? Midnight. So midnight, and then what would be, do you think, the latest that we have no daylight? What do you think the latest sunrise in Alberta is? Come on, you guys get up every morning. What's the latest you've ever think it's still, still dark? No idea? Ever, ever been in school and it's dark? In the morning? So we got zero, so maybe 10 o'clock. Would that be safe? And then this, we would go 0 and 365, right? So let's graph this using these window settings. I want to clear this. So this is negative 1.79. That is my... It's a sine graph, remember, right? And then we get sine. And then it's 2 pi times x minus 78. Shut that bracket. Divided by 365. And shut that bracket plus 6.3 because the 6.3 should not be in the brackets okay then go to your windows our x is the bottom so 0 365 we can go by 1 if we want and then 0 and then 10 hours graph So this is when the sun rises. This is hours after midnight. Okay, just going to wait for a few people here. They're still having some. So this is January 1st, which is really supposed to be December 21st. But anyway, January 1st or December 22nd, depending on what day of the year or where in the leap year it is. And this is the when sunrise is the earliest and then we come back up so this would be the longest day of the year and this would be the shortest day of the year okay so it's not hard drawing this graph I'm kind of giving you this here so just draw the graph quick Wait. 
just both fits. But the ten should be up there more. Okay, so remember our window settings were x is 0, 10, 1. Oops, 0, 365, 1. And y is 0, 10, 1. Okay, use the formula to determine the nearest minute. Okay, so here we're going to be rounding, most likely, just our normal rounding. Most. When the sun rose on May 7th and January 20th, uh, and one, and the which is, sorry, the 20, 127th day of the year. So very nice to give us that. We don't actually have to know our calendar. So what are we going to use? Is this like a do a Y2 or trace? Trace, right? So all you have to do is hit trace, 127. And what do you get? 4.962. So you got to take this, multiply by 60, right? And you should get 458. Okay, so just out of curiosity, what is the, what time is the shortest day of the year? We would hit, which one would you do? Or, sorry, you're right. I, d I don't have a, actually a max because I have to do min. Because if I want to find the longest day of the year, I want min, right? So, 3, and I would just get on this side. Enter. Enter, enter. So 4.51. So 4.30 in the morning is the earliest the sun rises in Alberta on the 169th day. Okay. Now, on what days of the year does the sun rise at 7? Exactly 7 o'clock. So this one we would do y2 equals 7. What days? So you'll find, except for the longest day of the year and the shortest day of the year, every other one happens twice. The max and the mins only happen once, everything else. Because, as you can see by the graph, you go, and here, here would be the second longest day of the year, and right beside it would be the second longest day of the year. Right? But in the middle is always the longest day. Okay, so what are we getting when y equals 7? Day what and what? What's the first one? Anyone get it? So day 55 and day 284. Okay, so let's do 1 to 3, 6, and 7. Okay, these go pretty fast. I had some people had less time in the last class and finished, so 